Hi friends and welcome to my channel. Today I found out that Jane Iredale is having a sale this week. It is for 20% off and in addition to that if you spend $100 then you can get a free powder blush. Uh, Jane Iredale is a brand that seems to primarily target women who are over age 40 and who have sensitive skin. So that is a good description of who I'm targeting with my channel as well. So I thought that what I would do is go over all the products from Jane Iredale that I've tried and let you know what I think of them so that if you decide to buy something from the brand either now or in the future you'll have a better idea of whether they might work out for you. Now it turns out that I've tried out 27 different products so I had no idea I had purchased so many so let's get started and I'll let you know what I thought of them. Now first a little bit of information about me. I'm 58 years old and I have dry and sensitive skin. I have never had any kind of work done on my face like injections or surgery and I don't intend to ever do anything like that. In addition, my skin is so sensitive that I haven't been using uh, retinol or any kind of other harsh uh, treatments on my skin. And rather what I'm trying to do is to use uh, more gentle skin treatments as well as makeup in the hope of looking a little bit fresher and maybe even a little bit younger. I've tried out hundreds of products over the past two years and so I have a lot of comparisons uh, for any new products that I may try out. So let's talk first about the powder blush, which is the item that they're going to be giving away with a purchase of $100. There's actually three, just three of the shades that are uh, eligible for the uh, giveaway. There's 14 shades in total, so that's very different than many companies these days, which are only offering a few shades of blush and having them be very, very bright so that uh, people with darker skin can use them and then people with lighter skin seem to be expected to just use very small amounts of it. In the case of Jane Iredale, they're offering 14 different shades. Some are matte, some are shimmers. Some are designed for a warmer skin tone, some are designed for cooler skin tones, and of course dark versus light. And they have a little chart in there that will tell you which uh, kinds of blush would be appropriate for your skin tone. So I thought that was very helpful and, and very nice. Well, the one that I have here is Cherry Blossom, and I feel like it's been a good shade for me. Um, Jane Iredale reformulated their eye sh their well, their eyeshadows, as well as their blush in 2022. So prior to that, when I used their old formula, I thought it was just terrible, like at the, the point of being unusable for both the eyeshadows and the blush. But this is a new and much softer formula, and I think that it's uh, much more modern feeling to me, and it works uh, much better. So it's a lot more like the RMS formula or the House Labs formula. But this one has a lot more shades than, than those other lines do, so I find that to be appealing. Uh, in general, I think that uh, this has worked out really well for me. I do think that both the eyeshadows and this blush uh, seem to work better when I first got them, and now they seem to be getting a little bit dried out. So I was a, a little surprised at that, that, that they seem to be uh, being affected by how long they've been sitting around. So I hope that that doesn't continue to be the case and that they don't uh, turn into something that's as hard and dried out as the previous formula. Uh, but so far I've still been liking it um, a good bit, and I may pick up another shade in this because I do think that uh, having the right shade for my skin without having to get out a fan brush and to adjust it is, is an appealing thing to me. Now at around the same time they reformulated their eyeshadows and so I have a couple of different uh, eyeshadows from them. Some of the eyeshadows that they offer are trios. So I have this one in the shade Harmony and then I also have a palette here that is all mattes that is called Naturally Matte. So these are the colors of that, and I swatched them on my hand so you can take a look at that. Uh, I have enjoyed using these shadows, and I, again, I thought that at first they were really very, very easy to work without and work with without any fallout and really as good as anything else on the market. Um, however, there's been a number of different eyeshadows that were released this past year from a number of different companies, uh, including Jones Road, uh, Lisa Eldridge, uh, Mob Beauty, 
and A there has not been uh, creating eyeshadows for that long either. And all of those companies seem to be creating really terrific formulas. But now I'm kind of wondering if, uh, if we let these eyeshadows sit around, if they're going to start to perform less well. Because I still like these shadows and I still think they're okay, but I had a much more difficult time applying them today than I did even a, a couple months ago. So I am not sure how these are going to hold up over time now. I'm a little bit skeptical since I do feel like they've changed over time. But I do still think that there's a lot of really nice palettes, a lot of really nice colors. And I still think they're better than the vast majority of the products that are on the market. And they're still certainly usable. So I, this is a product that I would res recommend with an asterisk. I'm not sure how things are going to go because it is a new product. Now, another group of products that I could not be more enthusiastic about so far, but that again, I don't know how we're going to hold up over time, are the brow products. So they offer three brow products, and uh, one of them is an eyebrow gel, and then there is a, a thin eyebrow pencil, and then there's a regular eyebrow pencil that's more of like a triangular type of a tip. So Jane Iredale has been making uh, the first two products, the thin eyebrow pencil and the gel, uh, for quite a while. And I used the old versions and I thought that they performed just fine, but in the old versions there was not a good shade for me. So the, the shades that they had available, and I think there were only three, the one that was the lightest looked really red and it, it really clashed with my hair, especially my hair as it's been getting more gray. Uh, but now they have introduced a, a few more shades, including one that is called Neutral Blonde, which is what I have on now. And that one seems to be much more appropriate for my own hair and seems to look a lot better on me. And I have been really happy about how these products have been performing. Uh, in terms of the gel, I feel like this does really a better job than any other gel that I have tried in terms of coating all of my hairs, even the really, really fine peach fuzz type hairs on my brows and making them look like they're actually really brow hairs. And the, the narrow pencil works fine. It worked fine in the old version and it works fine here. It, they don't seem to have changed the formulas for these at all. But I was surprised that this thick eyebrow pencil actually seemed to do a pretty good job for me. So I put the thick product on this side and the narrow pencil on this side. And I think that both brows actually look pretty good, which is really unusual because usually when we have a pencil with a thick tip like this, it doesn't work on my brows at all. But this one seems to work a lot better, at least so far. So I'm a little hopeful that this will continue to work for a while because the old formula did continue to work uh, for quite a while as well. So at the, this time, these uh, brow products have surpassed the Kosas ones, which is the ones that I used to use the most. And I think they also give me a more natural look than the Jones Road pencil, but the Jones Road pencil is much faster and it's also less expensive. Uh, in terms of uh, the amount that you're likely to be using because brow gels are very expensive. Now let's talk about their blush sticks and their highlight sticks. So again, this is a product that was reformulated last year. And when they first introduced them, it basically seemed to me like the, the blush sticks were uh, just a tinted version of the highlighter sticks. So they both were quite shimmery and uh, much more shimmery than many of the products that are on the market. So here's the, uh, the two shades that I purchased. The, uh, the highlighter is in the shade Eclipse. That's the gold one on the top. And then the other one is in the shade Ethereal. And both of these are quite shimmery. Um, a lot of people really complained about bitterly about that, uh, the idea that the only cream blush being offered by Jane Iredale was in something so shimmery. And I think this is, it's not just a, a highlighting shimmery shade, it's really a, a much more shimmery shade than many companies are offering. So if we look at something like Victoria Beckham or Merit, those are highlighters that are very muted. This, these are on the, the quite shimmery and obvious side. So. Uh, Jane Iredale did respond, and within a few months they did offer some matte blushes that are cream so without all that shimmer in them. I haven't tried that one yet. I think that these, these blushes are pretty, but definitely they're a little more shimmery than some people, especially maybe women that are uh, 
um, in their 40s and beyond want to be wearing all the time. But I, I don't mind the color. I'll put a little bit more on so you can see what it looks like. Um, so I guess Eclipse is like a gold color. Um, I don't think it looks bad on me, but if you don't want to wear shimmer, then this, these highlighters would not be the right thing to purchase. But the formula is very gentle and it's, it's obviously really high quality, so I do like that about it. Now the other item that they introduced uh, last year that seems to be part of this line to a certain extent is their new bronzer. So even though this is called Glow Time, these are not glowy bronzers at all, but they do seem to be kind of on the cool side. Um, I tried this on a number of times and I found that it uh, didn't work for me as a bronzer. It almost seems like they're intending it as a contour. And when I look at them applying it on the website, it really looks like they're applying it as a contour. I'll put a little bit like this maybe and you can see what it looks like. Um, Maybe I could use this as an eyeshadow, but I don't really see myself getting a lot of use out of it. Um, I'm very picky about bronzers and did a whole video about bronzers. So I don't personally wear contour. I don't really like the way it looks on anyone, and I especially don't think that I need it. And I think that a lot of women, as they get older, feel that they don't need contour either, that their face starts to uh, not look as plump and that you start to see the bones automatically. So I don't, um, I'm not sure why they would make a whole product that, that seems to be working more as a contour rather than a, a bronzer that you would use on your cheekbones and over your nose. I'm, it's a little bit peculiar to me and I'm not sure what to do with this product. So if you have any ideas, let me know and I'll see what I can do. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about a few lip products that I have um, gotten some use out of. Uh, the first one is a lip pencil. This is in the color Spice. And this is just a plain sharpenable lip pencil. It's not really that hard to make a good lip pencil and even companies like MAC and Bobbi Brown seem to be able to do it fine. This is a nice pencil. I've gotten um, some good use out of it and I think that as women get to be a little bit older that lining the lips can be a good thing because otherwise the, the border between the lips and the surrounding, the area surrounding the mouth can break down a little bit as you get older. So if you use a lip pencil, it can create more of a defined look and also keep the, the lipstick from feathering off the lips as much. So I've been trying to use lip pencils more uh, in recent months and I think that it, it creates a much better look for me. Another product that I've kind of liked, this is called uh, Just Kissed and this is in the shade Forever Peach. So this is really just a, a hydrating lip uh, lip balm and it has just a little bit of color to it. I think it's uh, it feels really good to me and it tastes really good so I've been happy about that. This is the kind of thing that you know, if I'm going out and I'm going for like a hike or something like that where I'm not going to have a mirror around but I know that I want to uh, be hydrating my lips and I kind of want a little special treat I might throw this in my bag something like or my pocket something like that. So I've, I've enjoyed it, uh, but for casual occasions. Now there is a red version that's a little bit brighter, so I think that that might be one that I would be interested in trying that I haven't used yet. I've only tried the pink one and the peach one. Uh, they also make a line of lip crayons, uh, which they call play-ons. So this is in the shade Blissful. And I think this is an attractive product. It feels good to me, and I've had it for more than a year, and it still feels fine to me. So I'm happy about that, that it hasn't gone bad. I would be a little interested in a different color. I'm not sure this is a, a color that's all that flattering, but uh, I'm not sure which color I would choose. The people on the website and the reviews don't really seem to be that excited about any of the colors. So I haven't uh, sprung for another one of these, but I think it's a nice formula. And if you see a color that you like, I think it, it could be a good thing. And then I have just recently got one of these HydroPure Hyaluronic Lip Glosses. I don't know that I like the way this lip gloss looks that much, but in terms of how it feels, I really like the way that it feels on my lips. It's very hydrating, it tastes really good, it uh, doesn't 
it's not sticky or yucky. So in terms of just something to put on my lips to give them some good hydration and a little bit of shine, I think it's a very nice product. If I'm really trying to look nice, then that probably wouldn't be the product that I would choose though. I also have one of Jane Iredale's eye pencils. Uh, and this formula has been out for a while. Uh, I have a real problem with a lot of eye pencils and that most products that are on the market, even if they're labeled as clean, uh, tend to irritate my eyes. So I have very, very sensitive eyes and one time I almost lost my eye to an eye infection. So I tend to be very careful about this. And this is one of the pencils that I have used without any problems. The ingredient list does look really good. It doesn't have cotton seed oil in it. However, uh, it is a little bit more difficult to apply than some pencils. So it's kind of on the hard side and it takes a little bit of extra effort for me to put it on. But when I do put it on, it I think it looks nice. I think it, it fulfills my uh, requirements of going on and smudging right away, but then staying in place without uh, smudging away by the end of the day. It's very similar, I think, to the 100% Pure eye pencil. And it does have a very clean ingredient list. And so I, you know, I really should use it more than I do because it's really not that much trouble to put on. It's just a little bit more trouble than some of the other pencils that I have um, been more likely to reach for. But in terms of it being a clean product that's uh, taking good care of my eyes, I've been really happy about that. So now this is a new product from Jane Iredale that was released just a couple of months ago. So I talked about this in a recent video of new makeup releases. And this product is a replacement for this old product, which was more like a foundation. And this is the foundation that Jane Iredale used to recommend pretty much to anyone who wanted light coverage and was especially those people who were a bit older. And that was always what was recommended to me, both by the people who, uh, the makeup artists for Jane Iredale and also by their their website quiz. So I was a little disappointed when they decided to uh, get rid of this formula. Uh, there were only shades for uh, light skin tones, so that was definitely a problem that they needed to address. And that the way that they addressed it is by coming out with this formula, which is considerably different. So this formula is uh, much less natural. It has a lot of a uh, lot more synthetic laboratory type ingredients in it. They're still supposed to be clean synthetics. Uh, and it also has a lot less tint to it. And there's fewer shades and more of the shades are for darker skin. So that part is good. But in general, basically my experience with this product is that it offers really no coverage whatsoever. I kind of wonder to a certain extent what the whole point of putting this on because I don't feel like it changed the skin that much in terms of how the, the texture of my skin looks and it's not offering any coverage. So if what you're looking for is a primer for whatever reason, so maybe if you have uh, more poor issues than I have, maybe if you're looking for something that would protect your skin from makeup that you're putting on on top of it, uh, maybe this would be a, appropriate for that or just something to wear that protects your skin from um, like pollution, maybe this would be wor work for that. Uh, supposedly it has hyaluronic acid in it, so it might be a little bit uh, nourishing to the skin, but I haven't found it to be uh, that good for that. I don't feel like it's bad for my skin. I just still kind of wonder what the point of putting this product on. Now I did put it on today over this other product, which is the Jane Iredale Amazing Base. So this product is very similar to the Bare Minerals uh, powder foundation. And it, it has a little bit of dimethicone in it, so I think that that does make it different. But other than that, in terms of how it performs, it seems very, very similar to me. I, I have a problem with zinc oxide on my skin. I find that that tends to be irritating to it. Uh, titanium dioxide in a large amount of quantity to be a sunscreen is a little bit irritating. So I used to use powder foundations like this on occasion. And I don't think that they made my wrinkles look all that much worse, but I stopped using these foundations because they have zinc in them. Today though, when I put down this primer, 
if we think of it as a primer. And then I put this on top of it. My skin doesn't seem to be so irritated by it. So I think that if, you, if you're looking for something that's going to be offering coverage and you think all of these little spheres in here are going to give you coverage, I think you're going to be disappointed by this product. But if you think of this product as something that just offers a teeny tiny bit of coverage, but mostly is changing the texture of your skin and making it look smoother and also uh, serving as a base for any other products that you put on it, then maybe you would like it, but it is pretty pricey. Now, speaking of primers, if you want a silicone primer, then I think that Jane Iredell does offer a very good silicone primer and what may be the best silicone primer on the market. Now, it does have cyclic silicones in it, so that would make it ineligible to be sold at Credo or as clean at Sephora, but that is not something that EWG seems to be that concerned about, and I have not found it to be a problem for my skin. I don't tend to personally use silicone primers on my skin because I feel that I don't really need them, and because when they stick to my skin, it can be hard to get them off, and then I feel that uh, that I really would like for my skin to be totally clean and not to have a layer of stuff on it because I feel like that is probably a more healthy thing for it. But I did send that the primer that I purchased uh, along to my friend who has poor issues and she has really liked that product as well. So I think it's a really clean ingredient list. I do kind of like the, um, the Fashion Fair primer. So if uh, you're interested in a product, product with silicone in it, that could be another one uh, to take a look at. And that one's sold at, uh, at uh, Sephora. So that one you can at least try out before you purchase it. But in general, I think that the, the primer that Jane Iredale offers uh, is really nice. And they offer one that's illuminating, and I do have this little tiny container of it. And then they offer one that's um, that's uh, more of just a brightening type of a primer. Now in terms of sunscreen products, Jane Iredell offers two different tinted foundation type products that have sunscreen in them. So the first one is the Glow Time Pro BB Cream, which has an SPF of 25 and which has zinc and titanium dioxide in it. So this has been offered for quite a while, but they reformulated it in 2022. And as it turns out, a lot of people really complained about this by saying that the product uh, was much more dry than it had been in the past and that it really emphasized their wrinkles. So I purchased this almost as soon as it came out and I had a hard time picking the right shade on the website. And so it, it turned out to be much more yellow and much darker than I sh should have on my skin. But I put a little bit on my hand and I do think that, uh, maybe you can see it, I do think it's very dry and it's really emphasizing uh, the texture even on my hands. And it was much, much worse when, on my face. So when I uh, wrote to Jane Iredale and I said that I wanted to send back the product, they just said, well, you bought so much stuff from us, don't bother to send it back. So I can show this to you now. But in general, this is not getting very good ratings, and that's a little bit unfortunate because people did seem to like the previous version. Now, they also offer another product, which is lighter in coverage. So so this, this previous version, uh, product, the Glow BB Cream. This one was more like a medium coverage, and this one is more like a light coverage uh, with a, a lot of hydration in it. And this only has a SPF 15, and it just has titanium dioxide in it. And I don't usually wear any kind of sunscreen on my face because it is irritating and instead what I wear is an SPF 50 hat which works much much better for me so my skin only gets a little bit darker during the summer if I'm out for a really long period of time I might put a little bit of sunscreen on my face even though it's it might irritate it or if I were going boating or skiing then I would put it on because the rays might be bouncing into my face and, and hitting me that way but in general I don't use a lot of these products but this dream tint one I would say that of the 
the uh, tinted products that I have with sunscreen in them. That one worked pretty well for me because it's only titanium dioxide in it and it's a pretty product. I didn't put it on today because it seems to be almost entirely sold out on the website at present. So I'm not sure if they just let it go out of stock so they could get a fresh supply in for summer or if they're reformulating it. And I hope that if they reformulate it, it's a more successful reformulation than uh, their previous one because people really seem to like the Dream Tint. And I, as sunscreens go, I kind of like it as well. Now this is a lipstick that I purchased from Jane Iredale. And I think that this was released maybe at the beginning of 2022 or the end of 2021. So it, it's not real old. What I, I think I got this shade for free, so that's why it's not a great shade for me. I used it a couple of times and then it broke and then I fixed it kind of by digging most of the product out of the base and, and putting it down in the base. So I don't think that it's that attractive of a lipstick in general. I don't think that the it's that attract this color is very attractive on me. When I looked at the website I didn't see any other colors that really stood out, but maybe that's just that they don't they didn't present the colors very well. So all in all I'm not very enthusiastic about this lipstick. But it is a clean formula. It does taste very nice. Uh, it does feel good on my lips. So I don't feel bad about using it. I just wish it were more attractive. Now on the other hand, this is a lip balm with SPF and color in it that I think is fairly attractive, especially as just a, a casual lip balm goes. But that has a really a taste that I find to be very unappealing. For me, what it, it smells like is furniture polish. And what it tastes like is a uh, zinc lozenge that I manage maybe to take uh, during cold season when I have a really bad cold and I'm trying to get rid of it. So you would have to really want your lips to be protected from the sun in order to use this, I think, at least if your, your taste buds were as sensitive as mine. So I've gotten really no use out of it. This is the color flirt by the way. So this is a hydration spray called Pomist and my understanding is that this is designed to spray down your face after you use either the powder, the loose powder foundation like I did today or else they, they also have a, uh, a compact powder, pressed powder foundation that, that's also an option. I felt like this product was a little bit irritating to my face. It does have alcohol in it. It has some other ingredients that are kind of questionable. When I filled out the uh, form on the website to get recommendations, they suggested that I use the lavender one, which is supposed to be calming and which doesn't have as many irritating ingredients in it. So it's possible that that one might be better for me. So I would be interested in trying that at some point. Now there was a time last year when I was trying to figure out uh, good things to be using as color correctors that would I could use under my eyes and that wouldn't uh, emphasize my wrinkles. So this is one of the things that I, I purchased to uh, to give the try to. This is called uh, Jane Iredale Corrective Colors, and. These are the colors that it offers. So I think for people with light skin, this is something that is supposed to be really helpful if you have bruising on your face and that the different uh, colors that are offered here can correct different stages of the bruising. I didn't find that any of these colors were that good for use under my eyes, but I'm hanging on to this corrective colors because even though I'm not planning to get any kind of plastic surgery or anything like that, you never know what's going to happen in life. And it's possible sometime I want, might have something on my face that I need to correct. I also saw looking on the website that uh, they have this cosmetic bag on sale. I think I got this for free at some point. Uh, but it's a really nice bag and I, I really uh, like it. And it's, it's quite large and uh, it seems to be really well made. And the, the gold is, is appealing without being too obnoxious. So I might pick up another one of these bags because I do like it. And I think there's just one more product that I've tried from them, which is a powder bronzing highlighter. And I got this in the old packaging on sale and they that bronzing highlighter used their old formula of blush. So it's basically exactly the same, except they didn't change that. All that they did is put the old formula in new packaging. And in order to be able to use it, you need to buy both the refillable case for $20. And then you also need to buy the refill 
for an additional $46. So that's a total of $66. And I think that's tremendously expensive. I'm kind of shocked at that amount. And I think that if you have $66 to spend on a uh, bronzing product, uh, that it, you can find one that's better than that. Overall, I guess that my feeling about Chain Iredale is that I'm, for the most part, the formulas are very clean and I haven't had a lot of problems except for with that mascara. I haven't had a lot of problems with them irritating my face. I feel like there's a lot, there's a dryness issue that runs throughout a lot of their products and that things tend to either be too dry or they tend to dry out as they get older. And that that uh, seems to be a consistent theme and I'm not sure why that would be, but it, it uh, does interfere with the performance of the products to a certain extent. However, there are some of these products that I have really enjoyed using and that uh, they, I think they do create a pretty look. So I don't think that uh, I would rule out buying from them again, and I probably will place another order this time uh, with the, at least the brow products in it. So I, I think it's a good line, but I, I think there's some products that are a lot better than others, so be careful. Thanks very much for watching all the way to the end of the video. If you've ever tried any Jane Iredale products, then please let me know what you thought of them in the comment section so that we can all learn from one another. In addition, if you like this video, then please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so that you'll make sure you don't miss anything. And thanks very much for watching, Coco, and I love you very much. Goodbye. Bye-bye.